Hello everybody, this is Lizzie from Earn and Lou, and today we're gonna dive into how and why to make a branding mood board. And this is really applicable, you know, whether you're working with us or a different branding agency, or you know, you're just starting to create kind of a vision of a business or a business plan. It's really important to have, and we'll dive into that right now. Um, so here's why you need a mood board. These are, you know, there are endless reasons why you might need one, but these are the biggest ones. So the first is just simply to solidify a really clear understanding of your preferences and the brand direction. This is helpful both for you and your team as a business owner, but also for the people that you're working with um, and to have really, really easy reference points for all parties involved. So rather than saying something like minimal or luxury, you're saying, you know, it's a minimal luxurious brand and this is what I think that it should look like because, you know, as we see all the time working in branding and as you probably know just from having a conversation with a loved one, everyone has really different ideas of what things like, you know, minimal or luxury or stylish mean and having visual examples provides really clear examples so that everybody's on the same page just from like a time spent perspective, having a really clear, really refined mood board will help you save time in the branding process, right? Because you're not going back and forth as much. There's always going to be some back and forth, but you have really clear examples. You have a direction. Um, it really helps take away a lot of the communication kind of misses when you have visual examples that you can be sharing with people. And the biggest thing that we run into, I will say every single time we do this for a client or advise somebody to do this is people will say, you know, I'm not a visual person or I'm not a creative person. And that's totally fine. In fact, if you do consider yourself one of those people, I would argue that it's even a little bit more important that you put yourself through this exercise because it is very vital just for your business as a whole. We have a lot of um, resources on our website about, about why branding is important, but essentially, you know, your branding is the story. It's the story. It's the feeling. It's the personality. It's the experience. It's so much more than just your logo and your colors. So here's what your mood board should include. You know, and there are so many things that you can include, but these are the basics that you should be looking for. So the first one to start out with is logo examples. Even if you already have a logo, it's really helpful to get an idea of what you do like and what you don't like. Even if you yourself cannot really articulate what it is that you do and do not like, it's helpful for whoever your creative team or your marketing team is to be able to see those. Color palettes as well. A lot of people will pick, you know, one color. They'll say like, I, you know, we are T-Mobile, we're hot pink, but T-Mobile also has a lot of other colors in their arsenal that they use. So you should start getting a feel for what kind of colors you like, what kind of colors go together. You know, do you want a pop of color? Do you want a large color palette with a lot of neutrals like we have? Are you in a primary color palette, right? There's so many different places we could go. Part of your branding is also your fonts. And I say fonts plural because as you can see from this presentation, we have you know our header font up here, which is a little more interesting. It's a little bit thicker. It stands out a little bit more. And then we have our body font. It's really common to have two fonts, if not three fonts. Sometimes people will also have a script font that's a little more cursive or handwriting style. The big thing that you want in your mood board is images, and we're gonna get into this in a second. This could be, you know, screenshots, it could be uploads, it could be pictures that you take. The more images, the better. Iconography, um, this could be, you know, like, what do the little symbols on your website look like? What kind of designs are you drawn towards? Um, if you do have a physical product or you intend to one day have a physical product, any type of packaging or swag examples are really, really helpful. And then also just anything else that feels relevant, you know? So like, let's say you are a dog apparel company, right? Any photos of dogs, photos of dog apparel might be really helpful information about, you know, I don't know, dog contemporary style, anything that feels relevant. You really cannot have too many things in a mood board as long as there's a clear direction with where it's going. And then just a couple 
things that you should keep in mind. I suggest like writing these down or having them near you as you're making your mood board. It should be really easy for, for multiple people to reference, which means this should probably be online as much as I love a good vision board, um, cutting out and like literally pasting pictures on a piece of cardboard is probably not the most efficient way to do a mood board. We always recommend Pinterest because it's it's built for things like this. It's a very visual platform. It's the third largest search engine in the world, right? So you're going to be able to find a lot of examples. Again, the more visuals and examples, the better. It's really helpful for your team. And you want this to be a multi-phase process, right? The biggest mistake that people make is they'll scramble through making a mood board in like 10 or 20 minutes and they'll send it off. And that's really like your first draft, right? That's your first round of thoughts. The more that you go into this, the more that you're looking at images, the more that you're looking at examples of branding, the more you'll start to really get a feel for what you do and do not like. So we suggest coming back to this a couple times. That also means not only adding things, but you know, say you work on your mood board today and then you come back tomorrow. Before you start adding anything, scroll through your mood board. And if there's things that you're like, you know, I really liked this yesterday, but now that I have a little more brand direction, I don't like it take those out. That's really, really helpful. The biggest problem that we see time and time again that business owners make that hurts not just their branding, but overall their sales and their company growth is they think about their branding and their visuals and the brand experience from the perspective of themselves and their personal, you know, perspective and preferences instead of thinking about your ideal customer. Unless you are your exact ideal customer and you fit into every single ideal customer persona, you really want to be thinking about what your customers like, what they're drawn towards. If you don't have an existing business yet, this is where a little market research could be helpful. If you do, you could do some focus groups. You could also just start going through the data on your website or in your store if you do have a store. Branding should convey a feeling and an experience that you want customers to have. It is so much more than just a logo. I know I've already said that and you'll hear me say it again. It's so much more than pretty pictures. It's more than, you know, just having some colors that go together. Your brand is what conveys your entire experience from end to end. It helps attract the right customers. And you also want good branding should repel the wrong customers, right? So that you're not drawing in people who aren't going to vibe with what you have to offer. So now that we've gone over that, I'm going to walk you through um, how to make a mood board. We're going to do it in Pinterest. And you'll also notice, I'll leave the link down um, in the description of this video, but we have a ton of really great examples of how to make a mood board on our Pinterest account that you can reference. Okay, so here is how you're going to get started. If you have never done Pinterest before, I'm going to give you like the quick and dirty tutorial. You're going to start by going to your homepage. So you'll click on your name to get here and then find wherever this little plus sign is for you. You're going to click on it and scroll down to create board. And then you're going to give your board a name. Um, oops, I'm going to call this mood board example. Okay, and then you have the choice to keep it secret. If you keep it secret, no one else can see it unless you email them to email it to them. So if you don't want people to see the ideas you're coming up with, you can keep it secret. Otherwise, keep it public. Okay, so we're going to hit create. And then right away, Pinterest is going to try to suggest a bunch of things to you. I recommend not even looking at these because Pinterest doesn't know what you're searching for yet. All they know is that you want to create a mood board. So it's showing you all these examples of mood boards. Okay, so let's pretend that I am creating a CBD company for busy millennial women who are really stressed out. They just want to have, you know, a sanctuary within their home. They want it to be a little bit fun, a little bit playful. They have, you know, a uh, household average income of 120k or higher so they're making pretty good money they like luxury they value good things but they also don't want to take life so seriously okay so that's the vision that I'm going with it's a wellness type brand but it's also not taking itself too seriously so this is my blank board I'm going to start by scrolling up here to the search bar and I don't really know what I want yet in this theoretical situation so I'm going to type in wellness branding, let's say, um, millennial and just see what types up or what pops up, right? Just start typing random things in and you'll see that, oh, it says nothing popped up because it's searching my pins. So you want to make sure that it's searching all pins. 
Okay, and then this is what pops up. So, you know, you're going to get some really great suggestions at the top. I recommend scrolling through. I love this sort of mystical vibe for this brand, for my millennial um, clientele. She's a woman. Let's pretend I've already done all of the research. I know that's what she's drawn to. So I'm going to find my mood board example and save it there. The great thing about Pinterest is, you know, I just said that I really loved this color, this font, this kind of logo example. If you click on it and then go underneath, it'll show you other things that are kind of similar. So I could scroll around and, you know, I'm not really seeing anything here that I love. So I'm going to go back up to the top. All right. So that was like kind of the first thing. And if you see this and you're like, I like this, but I don't really know what I like about it, a good thing that you can do is kind of start looking at some of the descriptions. So here it says like Boho Star logo. So I'm going to look for Boho Star branding and see what comes up, right? You're not going to like all of it. Here's some more. I love this. And so you just want to start adding things that you like to that mood board, right? You'll continue scrolling down. This is a really cool, obviously it's the same logo that I've been pinning, but it's on like this really beautiful background that kind of fits my vibe. I will put that in there. And then, you know, I'm looking at this and it's sort of like a boho, maybe even a little bit retro font. So I'm going to go up to my search bar and type in like boho retro fonts and see what comes up, right? Because let's say I don't work in marketing and I don't know anything about fonts. So I'm looking, I love this. Tangelo is the name of this font. I actually have used this for quite a few branding projects because it's just, it really translates well to a lot of different things. So I'm going to save that. And then you'll just kind of literally keep scrolling and find things that you like, right? So I've added a couple different images, right? These are graphics. These are like kind of an example of a cool social graphic I could have. Um, I'll save that. It's going real slow, huh? Save this. I love this one below it. It's kind of this like, you know, sort of like bright, but also neutral color palette. And then you'll see it'll start to show you where things have been saved. So now I'm going to go back to my mood board. I have these six fabulous pins. If you go up here and hit more ideas, it'll start showing you things that are similar in style to that. Okay, so you can see like these are all getting a lot closer to what I was looking for. So that's an option if you're feeling just like really, really overwhelmed. Um, let's go look for some color palettes, shall we? So in the first one that I pulled, it was like a muted purple in that logo that said Lumiere. So I'm going to type in muted purple color palette. And again, make sure that it's not searching my pins, it's searching all pins. Cool. Okay. So I'm getting, there's like some really great color palette examples here. I love this one, right? It's really fun. I love this one kind of looks like, I don't know if that's a sunrise or a sunset, but there's, you know, like the pinks and the oranges and you can just scroll through and you'll start to see, I really love this shade. I'm going to save this shade. Don't overthink, you know, what you're saving too much. It should really just be whatever pops out at you. And we recommend have at least 10 of everything. So 10 logo examples, 10 examples of fonts, 10 images at the bare minimum, just so you're giving your creative team, or if you're doing this yourself, you're giving yourself just some time to look through it. Like, obviously, you know, I said this is a CBD company. It's not a makeup company. I love this color palette. So you're just going to start popping things in there. Okay. And then let's go back up here and... I said this was CBD, so we're going to look for CBD packaging, right? Because I want to know maybe some inspiration for how I could be packaging this. So again, these aren't going to be like all in the exact same branding as I pulled, but you still want to pin everything you love. Like I love Recess. I love this minimal vibe. It's very much in kind of the color family that I was thinking of. And then you might see something like this right above it and be like, wow, I really hadn't thought about this is called a gradient when it kind of softly fades into one thing or another. I really hadn't thought about that, but I'm going to save it to my mood board because as I'm seeing it, I'm really liking it. I love this. 
you know, colorful packaging and the round packaging. And then it'll give you other kind of suggestions. So something I'm seeing is beauty packaging just from the example image. It looks like it might be a little bit in line with what I'm thinking of, right? So hopefully you're starting to get an idea of how this comes together, right? You're just, I'm literally just bopping around on Pinterest and tagging things that I like, right? I love like this cool monoline. I love that it's rounded packaging, right? I'm not, you'll notice I didn't pin any like of these really, really square images. I'm loving these things that are like a little bit rounder, a little bit softer, a little more feminine. I already had that sort of thicker retro font. This is a really good example of that. So you just keep going through. And now I want to give you some examples of photos. So photos can be a little bit more challenging to search for because, again, unless you're like super hyper literal, um, you may not know what you're looking for. So I am going to search for purple wellness. And then a really good word that you can put in your um, search is aesthetic, right? Because these are going to be a lot of more like artsy photos that are going to show up. Okay, so I love like these um, pompous grass images. That was really cool. These purple candles really fit in, right? And also, kind of like I said at the beginning, the more that I'm going into this, the more that my brand is really starting to take shape. At the beginning, I had a very soft idea, you know, all of seven minutes ago of the types of colors that I liked. And now I'm like really starting to go towards the soft, hazy purple, the soft, ooh, there's lavender purple aesthetic. Let's see what that pulls up. Right. So you'll it'll kind of start to like spark things in your brain. And then you just want to follow that call. I love, you know, this is my theoretical company is a CBD company, which is more natural. So I'm going to save some of these natural elements. We're going millennial. Millennials really love this like kind of sparkle aesthetic similar to the TikTok um, filter that you can use. I love this purple sky. Right. And it's getting it's starting to get really clear. So with really good branding, branding that's done really well, how it should work is people should be able to eventually tell that it's your branding without seeing, you know, like your logo immediately on it. It's like if you see the Golden Arches, I don't even need to say what company the Golden Arches are associated with you know, right? You know exactly what I mean. If you don't, it's McDonald's. <laughs> but that's what we're going for, right? We want it to be really clear, really crisp, and really memorable. And I want you to know, as I'm doing this, like, I'm not a purple person. Purple is not my favorite color. It's, if I were picking, like, my color, for me, it probably would not be purple. I love, like, this, you know, I, this is more of a hippie vibe. My girl. My persona is a little bit of a free spirit, even though she has this corporate job, she has this like corporate, um, persona, but her soul is this like hippie free spirit. So I'm tagging some of those things, but I'm thinking about my like ideal customer. I'm not thinking about who I Lizzie, what I Lizzie am drawn to. I'm looking at like the greater picture of this. And it's really important that you start to really put that at the forefront of your brain. I've actually told people to put like a sticky note on their computer before, just so that you're making sure that you're not getting too all over the place and really losing the core belief of what your brand is supposed to be, what it's supposed to look like. Okay. So we've gotten quite a few things. I love this like purple, um, wow, I'm having a really hard time with words today. Purple bath bomb image, right? That fits in really nicely. And so now that I've been talking to you and we've been pinning all sorts of things, let's go. Oops, that just pinned on the wrong one. So if you do, this is a good example. If you do pin something on the wrong one, you go down to this little pencil tool and you're going to click and it'll edit the pin. And I'm just going to go up here and make sure that it ends up on my right board. Okay. Um, so keep going through this. Now that I have a couple different things pinned to here, we've been talking, we've been doing this together. I'm going to, after I pin this one, go back to the mood board that I've created and look at it, right? And so this is where now that you see all of these as a cohesive unit, hopefully it's very clear for you 
what I am looking for as a brand, right? Like these don't all totally go together, but there's also no like black and white images. There's not a lot of masculine things. There's not a lot of faces. So as your design team or your graphic team, we or whoever you're working with start to look for trends and that's how they really draw out, you know, what it is that you want. Let's go to the more ideas tab and see what pulls up. Um, and the more ideas tab is not always like the greatest suggestions. I'm going to be honest, sometimes, you know, they're a miss, but it's still helpful to look right. Like none of this is really super jumping out at me. So I'm going to continue looking, but I love like, you know, this one Morgan black with the stars. Something that we talked about too was iconography. So let's dig into that a little bit. So we're going to go back up here again. We've established that I'm doing this like boho sort of millennial vibe. So I'm going to look for boho iconography, right? So that's going to look like a lot of celestial elements. So stars. Um, it might be like moons. We might have more natural elements. So let's look for boho icon star, right? See what comes up. Okay, cool. So we've got, I love these like witchy hands and stars that could be really interesting for a CBD company. I love how like witchy these ones are. I think I just said witchy a lot, but again, that's like a really good example because as I'm looking at these things, I'm saying, wow, I really like that. I hadn't really considered that before. If I had just, you know, hopped on my computer earlier today and looked for just straight up icons, I probably would not have ended up with these. But I love like these sparkles or twinkles. And if you're not sure what to call something, again, Pinterest is great for this because it's the third largest search engine in the world behind Google and YouTube. So it is built to kind of figure out what you're searching for. All right. So let's just pretend I did this for, you know, a few days. I came back to it a couple different times. And so then what you would do is go to your mood board example. And here is your mood board. Here are all of the things. So if you were working with a graphic team, you would take this and you can either hit share or if it's a public board, you just copy the link up here and send it and say, you know, this is really what I'm looking for. Please review this mood board as you make any edits. And then on your end, go back and remove stuff, you know, very liberally, very regularly. This should always be a work in progress. And a mood board is not just for when you're starting out. You should always have a mood board going for your business. Once you have established your overall business brand and business mood, you can make mood boards for different promotions, for different seasons. You can make a mood board for your Instagram, a mood board for your email marketing. It's just really helpful to constantly be thinking about this or have somebody in your life, in your team, who is thinking about it. Look at all these cool purple packaging, right? There's just so much cool stuff. I love the books. Maybe there's like a little bit of an educational vibe to some of our content. Okay. So that is how you create a mood board. I promise that it's worth it. It's, you know, it can be a little bit uncomfortable, especially like I said, if you don't consider yourself to be a quote unquote visual person, but it is so worth it in the long run and it'll help you get a brand that you absolutely love. And it'll also help alleviate a lot of frustration or communication errors between you and your, you know, um, branding team or a digital team or design team. Okay. Good luck. If you have any questions, please let us know. You can email us at hello at earnandlu.com or book a call on our calendar and good luck with your branding. We're so excited to see what you come up with.